Hello and welcome to Witness Aid UK. Today I'm going to tell you a story of child exploitation in the Watchtower. And for good measure I'm going to throw in a murder and a robbery too. I was 11 years old and it was a cold, dark Friday night in November. My sister, who's five years older than me, had gone to the cinema that evening. She was already working at that time, having left school at the age of 15. Now, being a Friday night, my mother wanted to go out on the effort. Now, in case you don't know it, the effort is the meeting for field service. And that's what we used to call it at that time. A few years later, we stopped calling it the effort because I think that name had rather negative connotations. So anyway, because I was under 12 years old, I couldn't be left alone at home. So my mother took me out to meet the group at the corner of Leith Walk and Jameson Place in Edinburgh. You can still see it on a Google map if you're interested to see where I actually went. I had already been out in the ministry for several years at this point. I was taken out on a Sunday morning with my mother and I remember having to stand on very cold doorsteps in short trousers and uh, thin socks on uh, cold winter mornings while my mother tried to deliver the sermon that she had memorised the night before. Well, this Friday night we met on the street corner and I was the youngest person there. At that time in the Watchtower organisation there were very few children in the congregations. In fact, in our congregation, Edinburgh Waverley, there were about 80 or 90 people and less than half a dozen under the age of 15 years old. We met the group at the corner of Jameson Place and Leith Walk. There were five adults present and me. And the man taking the group, always a man of course, he assigned us to the left-hand side of the cul-de-sac, Jameson Place. We were going from door to door selling the Watchtower and the Week magazines. And I use the word selling because as you will see in a few moments, we were asking for money. The fact of whether you make a profit or not is irrelevant. It was a money transaction in exchange for literature. Anyway, on the left-hand side of Jameson Place at that particular time, there was a bank on the corner, then there was a schoolyard, and two main doors, and two stairways leading to apartment blocks, which we call tenements in Edinburgh. Well, my mother and I went to the first two main doors, and we had no response at the door. Then we walked along a few yards further and my mother went into the first stair and told me to go ahead by myself at 11 years old into the next stairway. Now this was quite normal for me because I had already been trained in the theocratic ministry school to give uh, talks on the platform. I was already giving Bible readings and I had been going from door to door with my mother and had been taught a simple magazine presentation. So I entered the stairway and I climbed the stairway and knocked on two doors on each landing. There were three landings in all. And I got to the fifth door and I had had no response. Well, I went to the sixth door 
and I rang the bell and a light came on in the hallway and I heard hurried footsteps coming to the door and the door swung open quite quickly and a man was looking at me and he looked and said what do you want son? and I said good evening I'm calling with the Watchtower and the Wake magazines the Watchtower is a Bible magazine and the Wake is like a digest they are five pence each or ten pence for the two would you like them? and he looked at me and he said no son I'm not interested in the Bible no thanks, no but do you know what? President Kennedy's just been murdered. It's on the television right now. Now I must have looked slightly confused. I had heard of President Kennedy, but the full significance of an assassination didn't really strike home with me. I was only a child. And the man said to me, Honest, I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding. It really, it really happened just now. It's in Dallas and Texas. You can come in and see it on the television. It's on the news right now. Now I had been trained never to go into a house. So I politely declined. And I said, I'm sorry, but I'm not allowed to come into your house. But would you like the magazines? So he looked at me and he said, no, I'm not interested in the Bible, son, but I'll tell you what, it's Friday night, I've just got paid, there's a shilling for you. A shilling. One shilling, a twentieth of a pound. Now if I tell you that a shilling was more than twice my pocket money, at that time. And if I tell you that with a shilling I could go to the cinema and see two movies and trailers and cartoons and a newsreel and still have change to buy sweets. You can imagine the buying power of a shilling. So I thanked him very much and I sailed down the stairs with my shilling in my hand. I was floating down the stairs. So I ran along Jameson Place with my two magazines and my shilling and I met the adults in the group at the end of the cul-de-sac. And they asked me how I got on, and I told them what had happened. I said, President Kennedy's just been killed. Honest, it's on the television. He's been murdered. And all of the adults were very upset to hear that. They were really deeply shocked here in Britain to hear the news of JFK's assassination. It touched us all very much. So then my mum said to me, did you place the magazines? And I said, no, he didn't want the magazines. He said he wasn't interested. But look, he gave me a shilling. And my mother's face fell. Oh, you can't take that. You can't take money. We are not peddlers of the word of God. You'll have to give it back. So, my mother made me walk along the street with her, along Jameson Place, back up the stairs, explaining to me as we went that we Jehovah's Witnesses don't want money. We're just giving the magazines for money as a contribution, just to cover the cost of printing. We're not selling them. We're not peddlers of the word of God. 
what we received free, we give free. Yes, well, we climbed the stairs and we knocked on the door and the man came back to the door, quite surprised. <coughs> and my mother had the opportunity to give him a fine witness about how terrible world conditions are. Isn't it terrible, the news today, and how President Kennedy was murdered? Shocking. Awful. Won't it be wonderful when the new world comes soon and there's no crime or violence? So, despite the fact that the man was not interested in the Bible, my mother insisted that he take the magazines. And knowing her, she probably gave him tuppence change too. Meanwhile, the shilling, my shilling, was transferred from my pocket to the purse of my mother. And of course that compensated her for the money she had already put out for the magazines. Because in those days, what would happen is this. My mother had a magazine order. She would go to the magazine counter at the Kingdom Hall. She would pay for the magazines that she received at the magazine counter. And to get her money back for the magazines she had bought, she would have to go from door to door selling them. If on a bad month she didn't manage to place any magazines, then she lost the money that she paid for the magazines. That's not a bad way of doing business, is it? That's how the Watchtower used to make its money. At that time, I think the circulation of the Watchtower and the Awake was about two or three million copies per fortnight. And we used to pay four pence. That would be about five or six US cents for each copy. And we would sell them on to the public for five pence. And the penny was supposed to cover our expenses. So, that's where I was when President Kennedy was assassinated. And that is the story of the shilling that was taken from me to pay for the literature of the Watchtower Society. Thanks for listening.